Now, I'm going to tell you right off the bat, this is why these are the most important moments, because this memory I'm going to relate is burned into my memory, and I will never forget it. Hi, I'm Jason Sterling. I'm a gay dad, and this is an RM Cascadian travel vlog, and today, today we're going to look at the everyday travel and adventure. Okay, so recently, recently, as in today, I was thinking about the Disney Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel. I'm sure maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't. It's like $5,000 for two people for two nights, so you can pretend to be in Star Wars. I love Star Wars, by the way. I was really seriously thinking about that because, oh my God, wouldn't that be the most incredible you know, time ever? Wouldn't that just be a once-in-a-lifetime type of event? Now, I'm not going to because I saw the trailer and it looks like it sucks, but <laughs> it did get me thinking that, you know, there's an awful lot of times in my life, and, and, and I think the most important times are the, with my son, are the everyday type of travel and adventure that doesn't really, doesn't really fire up YouTube, doesn't really get a lot of attention, even from the world in general, but they are the sort of moments that create your history with a person. As opposed to just being a moment in that history, which is what something like the Galactic Star Cruiser would be. That would be a moment in that history. But it's the everyday stuff. It's the stuff that we do all the time or as a tradition that I think is actually more important. And that came around recently because it was Thanksgiving and it was Thanksgiving weekend. And my son and I on Thanksgiving weekend, we love what, what we like to do, what we love to do. We like to go out to the mall. No, not doorbusters. I'm not doing any of that crap. I don't care if there's a $99 computer. I'm not going. I'm not going at 5 a.m. to Walmart or wherever. But we do like to go to the mall. We like to do a little Christmas shopping, pick out some stuff, typically for my sister, my mom, her kid, some people like that. Have some lunch, hang out, and then we drive down to a small town about 40 miles southwest of, of Norman, where we live, called Chickasha. And they have a festival of the lights. And it's something I've been taking my son to since he was four years old. Since I, I'd only known him a couple of months, the first time I took him there. And it's been our reigning tradition ever since. So I'm going I'm to take a look at that today on this episode of the RM Cascadian Travel Vlogs. We're going to travel to the mall. <laughs> and then we're going to travel to the Christmas Festival of Lights in Chickasha, Oklahoma. Now, going to the mall, going to the mall. We have a really big regional mall here called Penn Square Mall. We used to have another large regional mall called Crossroads between where I live and Penn Square. It went under probably at least a decade ago. They made a sort of attempt to bring it back, and it didn't work then either. So it closed down for a while. They tried to bring it back, closed down again. So Penn Square is where I go to. It's about a 30-minute drive, maybe 35 minutes into the city. It's definitely a sort of regional mall. We have a small mall here in town where I live. It's seen a lot of better days, <laughs> you know, a long time ago. Like a lot of malls, it's fallen. Um, it's falling to, you know, a combination of online shopping and then just a whole lot of big box, either freestanding stores or big box shopping centers. Neither one of which am I overly fond of for Christmas shopping or sort of general shopping. I do still prefer the mall. Penn Square has a wide variety of shops, kind of, still. <laughs> it's also, though, having its moments. COVID has hit it very hard. It's lost a lot of shops. And I'll show a picture right now. In fact, this is a picture. This was at 11 a.m. It's pretty empty, you guys. And this is Saturday after Thanksgiving. 
So my son and I still went, we, and we had a great time. But uh, it's definitely falling on hard times. And a lot, some of the shops I normally would go to there to do shopping, like Williams Sonoma or Godiva Chocolatiers, uh, were both closed now. They're, um, the, the old jewelry store there, it's been there forever, B.C. Clark's, also shut down. It's a local jewelry store. They're, they didn't shut down all over the place, just they closed that location. There's still places we like to go. We like to go to the Lego store. There's a C's candy store. I love C's candy. They're, they're, they're so good. We've still got a major department store, Dillard's department store. We will check. And Macy's. Macy's actually. You should buy more stuff at Macy's, I think, than Dillard's even, now that I think about it. But they've got that, but a lot of stuff was closed. And I'm going to say real quick, let me orotate real quick. You know, like we went to JCPenney's, and JCPenney's looks like it's on its last legs there. So there may be a really large opening, you know, a large anchor store opening soon at that location. But here's part of the problem. They really do themselves as much of a disservice as anything else. When we were in there, it just wasn't well kept. And especially on the second floor where you have like home goods and stuff like that. Half of it was empty and not just empty, but an emptiness in a state of dereliction. Okay. Where you felt more like you were in the storeroom area of a department store, an empty storeroom than the actual department store. And I get it. They don't have enough business to fill it up any longer. They don't have enough merchandise to fill it up. Nobody's buying that sort of stuff. Okay. Wall it off with a nice wall that looks like it's meant to be that way and it's and the second floor is just meant to be smaller and condense things so people I'm swear to God, I'm walking through this almost empty space and there's actually still a couple of tables spotted around it with a half hearted attempt to have something on them. But like my son said as we were walking through it, he said, you know, this actually looks kind of depressing. This is actually kind of depressing in here. And I was like, yeah, you're right. It is. And and so they're doing themselves as much of a disservice as anything else. We ended up leaving. We didn't really stay very long. It was depressing. And it, it didn't look like it didn't look like it had anything. Okay, so we left. But we got other stuff there. We did. Lego's my favorite store in the whole wide world. Love the Lego store. I could shop there. I mean, honest to God, I love it so much. It's so beautiful. Okay, so yeah, we went there. We went to the Seas Candy Store, my second favorite store, at least at that mall. Oh my God, the candy's so good. Oh. <sighs> We've already eaten it all. So <laughs> we did already eat it all. I actually bought a little box uh, to give my sister's kid. That's part of with some of, with some Legos, you know. We ate it. We ate it. I'm gonna get her into something else. That's fine. But yeah, we ate that too because they're so good. We can't resist it. We always ate some lunch there. Lunch there was a miserable mess, though. We went to the food court. Food court's having trouble too. Food courts lost um, a lot of tenants. And so we went to this place. It said, it said Cajun Cafe, right? Cajun Cafe. And I thought, oh, well, let's go check that out. That looks locally owned and something different. You know, let's maybe have some blackened fish or something. I don't know. So we go up to the Cajun Cafe. <laughs> And you can see what we got. We got Chinese food. We got Americanized Chinese food. That's all they had. So I don't know how that's Cajun, and I don't think it is Cajun. I think what happened is the Cajun Cafe went out of business, and someone came in and and bought it to open a Chinese restaurant. And, but rather than change, buy new signage, because signage is expensive, new signage, that's like, fuck, we'll just continue to call it the Cajun Cafe. Who cares? Who cares it's Cajun? I mean, you know, we got chicken in it. Cajuns eat chicken, right? Close enough. So we had lunch. Now, after lunch, we did go see... Uh, Ghostbusters. We saw Ghostbusters at the movie theater there at Penn Square, which is still open. Uh, and it was nice too. It's an AMC. It was actually a really nice theater. I thought this, I was afraid it's going to be really small and tiny, like mall theaters can be sometimes. It wasn't. It had a great size screen, really nice seating, clean, well taken care of. Cheers, AMC. They did a great job. And Ghostbusters was great. I loved it. Now, especially for like myself, I've seen the original and I don't think my son has, but maybe he has. I mean, he knows enough about the original that he knew what the marshmallow men were about, right? And so if you've seen the original, I think you'll get a little bit more out of it because it was, it calls back to the original quite a bit. And it's definitely a sequel, I would say, to the original. It was great. Very heartwarming, very cute. Uh, just a lovely, lovely movie. 
So we saw a movie, had some lunch, did our shopping. And then, then to the big, this is what we do. This is our thing. We went to Chicken Shea. We had dinner in Chicken Shea first, and this was good. Now, this is a great spot. If you're ever in Chicken Shea, Oklahoma, if you're ever coming through Oklahoma at all, Chicken Shea is about 40 minutes south of OKC. So let's say you're at the airport and you have a six-hour layover. I don't know why you would. We don't have any connecting flights, <laughs> Rogers, but pretend with me. Pretend with me. Okay, you've got a six-hour layover. And go your go on down. Go down. Take I-44 down to Chickasha. Get off the first exit. Drive up over the viaduct by the grain elevator. And on the left-hand side, you're going to see a diner called the J&W Diner. That is when I was a kid, when I was a little kid, it, it was in existence then and long before that, long before that. And it is a true old fashioned diner where all they have is a counter and stools, no booths. And when I was a kid, they had this fantastic Coney, a hot dog with slaw and chili, all this stuff on it. They still have it. They still have the fantastic Coney. It's the best thing. Well, one of the best things. I mean, come on, the best. My heart, my inner child, my memory says it's the best thing I've ever eaten. It is really, really good. My son and I went there. We had conies. We had fries. And then we drove to Shannon Springs Park in Chickasha. Now, I'm going to tell you right off the bat, this is why these are the most important moments, because this memory I'm going to relate is burned into my memory. And I will never forget it. The first time I took my son there, you know, we get out, it's late, it's night, it's cold, it's freezing that night, it's freezing. And he's like four years old. And, you know, he's so little and he's four years old and his eyes are so big. I can still see his face, like different colors from, the, from, the, from that giant tree, you know, because we're parked over by the tree. His face is all lit up from the glow of that tree. And he's like, he takes off running for those lights. And I can still see his little, little, almost toddler legs just racing, racing towards those lights. And I can still hear him going, <laughs> he's so excited. He's so excited. And I still remember that. And I can't even drive up there. I didn't really think about it without that home memory flooding back. And that is one of my strongest memories ever of him and especially of that age is that memory and you know it was it's not any place fantastic it's not any place spectacular it didn't cost any money to go there but it's it's probably the best holiday trip i've ever taken and still take and we took it this time and you know over the years the it's changed the tree is all white lights now it used to be led and would change colors but there was an accident, not an accident, a weather event, a weather event some years ago, uh, either a tornado or a downdraft or some strong, strong highline winds uh, damaged it, and they had to replace the lights. And I, I'm guessing these were cheaper, you know, maybe something like that. But the white ones are still pretty. It's still a beautiful, you know, landmark on the hill, you know, tallest point in Chickasha, that tree. And you've got things like the bridge, uh, as you can see here now, I'll put the bridge here. The bridge is lighted. When I was a kid, that bridge was there when I lived there. It's exactly the same. And I was telling my son this time, there's gaps in between the wood. And when I was little, you know, when I was four, like first time I took him, I would try to jump over. I tried to get past the gaps and not step on them because I was afraid if I stepped on the gap, I would fall all the way through to the water. And so that bridge, you know, Memories, nostalgia, right? Okay, so you also have the lit up. Um, that's like a well house. You, this place is called Shannon Springs Park because the pond is actually a spring fed. And it used to be 50 years ago, 40 years ago. I don't know when they stopped doing it. We never got water there. Okay, so before, probably more than 40 years ago, they stopped it. But you could go and get water there. As a citizen, just go and fill up things of water and go home with it. It was free, right? Free water. So that was an actual well house. And that's kind of a neat bit of trivia there for you. Also, when I was little, I used to have a huge bird aviary there. And there was, I mean, it was almost gone. In my memories, it was almost, almost all the cages were empty. 
So I think it was in the process of being shut down, but there was actually a small zoo there, if you can imagine that. Now, it's hard to imagine in this day and age, but I guess in the 60s, maybe, or even the 50s, I'm not sure. Hell, maybe even earlier, it might have been built by the WPA or something like that. <clears throat> there was a line of cages along the dam for that pond. And there were animals in the cages, and the cages were literally, I'm not kidding. When I tell you it was a cage, it was a cage, you guys. And there were, I don't remember, I don't know if I remember monkeys or if I remember the picture of the monkeys on the wall of the cage, but I know there at least at one point was monkeys there. There was a lion there even when I was little, still a lion there. Now, when you're four, you think that's, oh, yay, we're seeing a lion. It's really cool. As an adult, I think it's really tragic. And I think even when I was younger, it was pretty tragic. I think, I think the lion was only still there because they couldn't find another home for it. And I think that because I think I asked my mom about it at some point. And I think she said, yeah, it took a long time, but maybe back in the 70s even, they had tried to find a real zoo to take the animals. And a lot of them did go relatively quickly, but I guess the lion in particular was hard to find someone to take. Uh, that was there. So that, that zoo was there. There was a pool like across the road there was a pool in fact where the gift shop is i think is where the pool was i think the gift shop was the pool house like where you would enter so i think that was actually where the pool was it's been filled in obviously and my mom says oh that there was used to be a carnival there not a carnival but an amusement park there for like little kids but i never went i don't remember that so, anyway, that's Shannon Springs Park history in a nutshell. Now it has the Festival of Lights. I, I, I did some pictures here, you know, as I'm talking, kind of see what it looks like. Now, our other big thing is not just seeing the lights, but we have to have hot chocolate and cinnamon rolls. In this case, I, we didn't do cinnamon rolls this time. <clears throat> Excuse me. We did something a little different. He did a, like a cake taco which means they took cake and folded it like a taco shell and then stuffed it full of frosting. So a cake taco. And I tried a cookie this time, but we still got the hot chocolate. It's always good. That's our big finale. It's cold, you know, so we get some hot chocolate, get a snack. Uh, we eat over under the, under the tree. You know, it's bright. Look up at the tree, watch people play and hang out. And then we head back home. And then we head back home. And so that is my big tradition. There's been a lot of different things over the years we've done there. Sometimes we'll do a carriage ride. They typically have carriage rides that go around the park because there's a road that circumnavigates the park. So you can go around the park, see the lights that way. Sometimes they'll have camel rides. One year we did a camel ride. Uh, you can see from the pictures or, uh, that there was a um, uh, Ferris wheel as well in a in a carousel they've also got ice skating now this has got to be at least the second year they've had that as well so and sometimes some food trucks will be scattered around now it depends i think maybe there was just one this year they've had other years where they've had more but then the food trucks were kind of on the other far side of the park kind of from where the parking and the gift shop was. So I'm not sure the food trucks were actually part of it or if they just got permission from the city because it is a public park to set up there. But I don't think they did a whole lot of business. You know, by the time you got over there, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't think they were there this year. I'm sure they weren't. But that is it in a nutshell. And that is our, that's our everyday adventure are are just average everyday adventure but it's not average because it's something like i said that forms history and that is our tradition that's what we do every year that's when we look back you're going to see you see that whole span and that whole string of those visits year over year over year over year and and it's very personal and it's very unique to to the individual 
and, and it is to us. So please hit like, subscribe, and notify. Uh, we're coming up with the unusual adventure, of course, coming up New Year's Eve. We leave on the Carnival Vista on a eight-day cruise in the Caribbean. And that will be you know, the more, you know, uh, moment in history type of voyage. But uh, especially because New Year's Eve, my son's first New Year's Eve. I mean, he's been alive for other New Year's Eve, but we've never done anything for New Year's Eve. This is the big one. Big, let's do something for New Year's Eve. So hit uh, subscribe, like, and notify. And join me for that, please. And in the meantime, thanks for watching.